Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and today we're going to be talking about APIs, and very specifically web service APIs. And while I'm going to cover some things here, I do want you to know on the automator.com slash APIs, you can get a lot more information. We've done several um, webinars where we've talked about that and web scraping, and I got we got lots of tools. There's tons of videos here. We're going to go a little bit deeper into showing a little bit more, kind of giving you an exact flow of how things happen, which I, I found this cool tool, so that's why I wanted to share about this video. But also, if you could do me a favor right now, like the video, it'd really be great. Greatly appreciate it, and uh, it'll, of course, encourage me to, to make more videos. So please like. Um, meanwhile, let's get going. Here is, on the left, is this webhook site, which I'll explain here in a minute. I'm using Chrome. And on the right, I have Studio, where we're going to do a little bit of programming here. And um, I also am going to show you, we have Firefox, which is down below, but I'll, I'm going to use Firefox just to generate some traffic at first to help kind of ex explain the concept of what's going on. And so starting off on the left, this webhook site, it's pretty cool. It allows you to have a webhook, right? Which is basically a server sitting there waiting for people to, to go to it. And then, you know, this is the same for all browser traffic, right? When you have a server, like let's say you go to amazon.com, you submit a query, basically the URL is a query to Amazon. And then the query, the query itself will look at it and say, hey, is there anything specific here? Do I just bring back the main page? Do I get a sub page or some information into a query? And that you use the... the query string to bring back key value pairs. And with that, you'd be able to say, hey, I want to look for where the key, you know, or the, the type is this and the date is this, right? So we'll, we'll do a little bit of this in the video. But um, what's cool about this webhook site is it allows us to actually see on the server side what's happening. And so if you go to webhook.site, and you'll be able to, to pull this up and it's free, at least the, the basic version's free. That's all I'm using. It will generate for you a unique URL, right? So right now I can go to this URL, let me copy this to the clipboard and that's what we're gonna use Firefox for. I'm gonna paste it here and now when I hit enter, we should notice here, hey, this just said there was a get request. Now there's, I think five, maybe there's more different types of requests. The by far, most of them are either get or post requests, right? The get request, and that comes in and basically there really wasn't anything else there. It just did a get request and it returned a given value. Um, here it returned this one, two, six, nine, one, four, blah, blah, which let me see if I can see it. I don't see that right away in here, which is weird. Um, cause we should be able to see, I think that's the JavaScript that's being returned. Let's move this out of the way. Since we understand we're just using Firefox to do an API call through HTTP protocol to here. And this was done, this is the, the header, now this is the, a lot of the stuff is done by the user agent in your browser. Now we'll notice with AutoHotKey, we don't have that by default. Sometimes you need to add that. But what's really cool is we can see, you know, the server side of things of what happens when we do that API call. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's say we wanted to pass it a couple key value pairs, right? And so let's say, instead of just saying this, where the very first one is the... Um, question mark and well if this is just key value pairs so it's this whatever word let's say word equals dog who knows right now when i hit enter you're going to see there was another one now this is set to be newest first so we got to click up here now notice here this query string word and the word it doesn't have an equal here but it's just saying these are the key value pairs the word and dog this is what the server received from firefox was in this case firefox made the api call to that server the server said hey here i see these two things now it would you know most websites would have something done with that query and then return specific data for it that we don't program into this this just helps us understand it now what if we want to pass more than one key value pair so this is the key value pair. We start off with a question mark. Here's the key is word, and this is dog. Let's actually, so let's change this to cat. So that's gonna be cat, and then we're gonna add one. So after your first key value pair, then use the ampersand um, for each key value pair. And, and for however many you have, if there's more than you know two or three, you keep using the ampersands, it's no more the question mark. So, and um, date equals today's the 16th, eight slash 16. And let's go ahead and do one more. So the ampersand and color, oops, color equals blue. Right now when I hit enter, we got another API call to the server. Here we can look at it. And here, here's the you know word, this time it's cat. The date is 816 and the color equals blue, right? So hopefully you can see how 
this information is getting sent to the server and getting parsed. We still have the, the headers here, which is mostly the user agent, but not all. Um, there's things about the size and that. A lot of things don't normally need to be filled in, but sometimes you have to. It depends on the web server and what you're connected to and what you're doing. Uh, with AutoHotKey, often a lot of the stuff, we don't. it's unneeded. So speaking of AutoHotKey, let's go ahead now and switch over. Let's start using AutoHotKey to um, pass uh, an API call. Now, I have, let's see here. Actually, you know what? Let's go to, uh, let's bring back Firefox. And I'll show you where it is. So, yeah, my dyslexia is apparent. So APIs, this comes up here in the main page, you can download this API syntax writer. So if you click that, it, you need to give me your email address for it, but I'm, I'm not using the other than for my newsletter. That's all I use it for. Um, and you'll get this tool, which I'm gonna demonstrate now. I'm gonna launch it here. So here's my auto hotkey. API syntax writer. So this is just launching it, right? So now it's running. Uh, we'll close that. Now, when I, so now I'm in studio. So this is Auto Hockey Studio. And if I hold down control and left click, these, it brings up this menu of stuff that I, I wrote all these before I learned about QAP. Otherwise I would have done this in QAP. But anyway, uh, I have example API calls. So let's just do like the win HTTP request template. This is my generic template. So bam. This puts in a lot of what I might want with some stuff commented out because I don't always want them, but I want to have them handy, right? Um, and now let's go ahead and take, let's go back in here. Well, let's just go ahead and there we go. I can copy it that way. All right. So my endpoint in auto hotkey, this is my endpoint. Um, I'm just defining it here. Oh, I've got a space in the beginning. Um, and here is my query string, which for now we're going to leave that blank. I'm using the win HTTP request. So this is my com object and I'm storing that into a variable called HTTP. And then we're gonna open a get request to the endpoint and also pass along the query stream. However, in this case right now, the query stream is blank. So that's gonna just pass that. Um, the payload, I'll explain in a few minutes, it's for a post request, but we're not gonna have a value in that. So that'll basically be blank too. This is just a placeholder, right? So for later when we're ever doing this. And, um, and then we're going to see the response here. So let me go ahead and clear this traffic. <laughs> so delete, delete, delete. There we go. I'm going to save this because Studio is great, but sometimes it doesn't like unsave things. So API example. All right. So now we're in it. I'm going to launch it. It's running. Now I'm going to hit my hotkey, which is built into here. So um, you won't have it. This has a hotkey in it, and I'm going to trigger it. And now it just triggered. It went to that destination, and here it returned back this in this was a get request now notice the headers are far fewer here right there are a couple default content type that must be a default value that automatically gets sent because i don't have any here um, the user agent it, it assigned one to it even though i didn't have one which is right here i can assign something to it and connections closed no query string values let's let's first off let's add uh let's say so what do we have before color Oops. Color is going to be blue, and let's say uh, name is Joe, and uh, let's just get rid of this last one. Now this is an object I'm storing it in and passing it to it. So I'm going to save this, run it. This query string builder function, it's actually, you can find it in this tool here. Let me, let me see here. It's been a while since I've used this tool. Um, so the API calls, and programs and query key value pairs, is that it? Yeah, there we go. So here's where you would get that function. So I just have it in my library, so I don't have to worry about it. But let's go ahead and save, reload, and run. Now I just said, here's my next call done with auto hotkey. Now notice here, query string color is blue and name is Joe, right? So we're connecting that thing, we're sending it, these, now, and this is where often you'll have, you know, a, the you can control the website or, or the API call with these uh, key value pairs that you're, you're passing along in, in that query string. So it's nice having them in an object that that way, if I'm programmatically going over them, they're separate. I'm not just trying to build this long string. This gives me a little more control to be able to do stuff with it. Um, and now in a lot of the other stuff, and you'll see in, in the tool here, oops, wrong tool, uh, when I click, um, here we can have the set options. So if you're running Fiddler, which I actually have in the background, I could show you. 
Uh, but that'll show you from the Fiddler side. It shows you from your computer what you're sending. Let's go ahead and actually, let me, do I have it up here? I thought it was in my default. That's funny. It's not because I have this tool. So, so let me click here. I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to, oh, hey, hey, there we go. Headers, no, it's not options, Fiddler. So here I'm going to move these two. Eh, well, I'll move it all up. All right. So we don't want this after the open. I'm going to set this proxy to this is the value here. And this, when you open Fiddler, you'll, you'll see uh, if you don't have this on, like right now, if we had Fiddler running and clear the traffic, I'm going to do the API call, but we won't see it in Fiddler. Why is that? Because Fiddler goes directly to it. What we need to do is to turn on this proxy. So I'm going to relaunch this tool. And now when I hit my hotkey, we'll see the traffic in Fiddler. And this allows me to see really what am I sending to that server, right? So this is really cool. Is um, so here we can see what was actually sent. We can see this is the top part is what's was sent. The bottom is what was returned, right? So it's kind of like using that webhooks tool, except for it's on my computer instead of in the cloud where the server is, right? So here I can literally see, you know, I could do something with my browser and then go and try to mimic it with Auto Hotkey and Fiddler. And then look at it in Fiddler and see what it did. Here you can see some other stuff was actually happening in the background. That website's monitoring, I guess, and uh, maybe it was Chrome is triggering some of these things. And here, actually, if I scroll this over some, um, call somewhere in here. Oh, the Chrome. So see, so see this was these are auto hotkey the process, and then Chrome is continuing to ping that website for whatever reason. Who knows what it's doing. Uh, but it's it's just good to be able to see like who it's being done from, and uh, yeah, that's a, basically a, a decent intro into API calls using Auto Hotkey, mimicking it with a browser. Uh, API calls are amazing; they're they are so so helpful. I think it's a great thing to be able to get used to. This tool just helps you play with it a little more and understanding what you're sending and seeing what the computer you sent to received because sometimes you think you're doing something and you're not. So it's a great way to test what you're doing. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And please, like I said, like and uh, comment here. Let me know what you think.